Hello, medical faculty. The purpose of this video is to discuss and demonstrate how to supervise your medical residents doing screening, brief intervention, and referral to treatment, or SBIRT protocols with patients. SBIRT is a process that more and more of our residents need to learn about since it's becoming a more widely supported and implemented protocol for screening and intervening with various risk behaviors. This SBIRT training is focused on substance misuse, specifically tobacco, alcohol, illegal drugs, and non-prescription use of prescription medications. As faculty, we want you to have some mastery of the skills used in the SBIRT process, and then to use some of those same skills in working with your residents as you supervise them. As you know, supervision involves giving your residents feedback and guidance on educational, professional, and sometimes personal matters to help them deliver the best patient care. Supervision is not simply a master-apprentice relationship, but a collaborative, supportive process with the resident. The skills for an expert interaction are the ones that the resident can't just learn from reading slides or hearing a lecture. They are interactive skills that the residents really need to practice, especially the brief intervention. As you'll see in the next video, the resident is going through screening and brief intervention with a patient who has high blood pressure. Note what the resident is doing, and then later we'll show you a supervision video so that you can see an example of how you could possibly supervise this resident in this particular interaction with this patient. So now that we've discussed a little bit of your medical history and, your t and taken your vitals, I'd like to ask you a few more questions. The, sure. The rise in your blood pressure is concerning to me, so I'd like to gather a bit more information about your lifestyle. Okay. Okay. Have you had any major stressful events recently or any change in your work situation? Not really. I haven't been stressed. Uh, I've been working steady. You know, these days I'm glad to have a job. I really am happy that I'm working. So. Yeah, that's certainly true. I'd also like to ask about some health habits that can contribute to high blood pressure. Okay. Okay. Do you smoke at all? I don't smoke. I smoked, you know, as a young adult. Quit 20 years ago. I went cold turkey. Mm -hmm. I was proud of that. I haven't even thought about smoking. Okay, great. Um, do you drink alcohol, including beer or wine? I, I do drink beer. I drink, you know, two to three pints on weekdays, sometimes on weekends, maybe four or five. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm concerned about the amount that you're drinking currently. It sounds like you're having about 15 to 20 drinks per week, and that's definitely more than what we would recommend and could certainly be contributing to your high blood pressure. Well, I, you know, my pressure's been high for years, and, um, you know. Well, according to your chart, your blood pressure has gone up since July, and you said that you've been drinking more recently, so do you see the connection there? Maybe a little bit. Alcohol can have some dangerous effects on your body, so along with contributing to high blood pressure, it can have a big impact on your liver, which you need to keep in mind. So your liver has several different roles in your body. First, it helps process excess fatty acids before they get distributed to the rest of your body. It also helps process alcohol and other drugs. So when you have an excess of alcohol, your liver can't work as efficiently, and the fatty acids build up, and over time, your liver won't be able to work as well. Okay. Okay. And how about the use of other drugs like cocaine, heroin, marijuana? I don't use heroin or cocaine, and I've never even thought about using the hard drugs. Back in school, 20 years or so ago, I smoked reefer. You know, once I got out of school, I haven't used that at all. Okay. Have you ever used any prescription medications that weren't prescribed for you or in a way that wasn't prescribed? No, I don't, I don't uh, really like the idea of taking pills. Uh, as a matter of fact, a couple of years ago, I had this jaw surgery. They gave me a prescription for Percocets. I took one, made me feel weird. I think they're still sitting in the medicine cabinet. Okay, excellent. Well, it sounds to me like the increase in your drinking could certainly be contributing to your high blood pressure. I think decreasing the number of drinks that you have when you go out and maybe decreasing the number of times that you go to the bar each week could be the best thing that you can do for your health. Well, I guess I'll try. Okay. 
And then we'll set up an appointment for about a month from now. We'll recheck your blood pressure and see how you're doing with all this. Sound okay? Okay. Okay. What you've just seen is the resident, Christy, going through Espert with an individual with high blood pressure. What are your thoughts about how she did? How do you think it could be improved? These are the kinds of questions that you should be asking yourself as you get ready to do the supervision. What we hope to see in an expert interaction is the resident talking respectfully with the patient, trying to find out what the patient's views are about what's going on, getting the patient to become more aware of how he might make some changes in his substance use that can make a difference in his blood pressure, negotiating with him about what he might be willing to do, and then trying to summarize about the plan going forward. These are also the kinds of things we'd like to see in your supervision with the resident. We're calling this a parallel process because you can use some of the same skills with the resident that the resident is using with the patient. As supervisors, we should speak respectfully with residents about what we think they did affirm what they did well, and see what we can do to help the residents shape some different behaviors if their brief interventions have not been effective. We also want to get their feedback on what they see as barriers to doing SBIRT, and we can help them problem solve around those barriers. Finally, we want to talk to our residents about the things that they might try to do differently in the next screening and brief intervention. By using some of the same collaborative and motivational tactics, we're also modeling those skills for residents. Now, here's a video showing a supervisor doing some supervision with Christy about this particular case. Hi, Christy. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit of feedback about the interview, if, uh, if that's okay. Okay. Great. Um, I thought you did a really nice job of kind of engaging him and introducing the, the problem of drinking and in connection with his uh, doing the screening and connecting it with his uh, blood pressure. Okay. So I thought that went very, very well. How, how do you think it went? I think it went okay. I think I screened for everything I needed mm -hmm. to screen for. Do you think anything could have been done better or did you have any sense of he was what he was doing? Uh, was he going along with you on everything? No, I'm not sure that he realized it was as much of a, as big of a problem as I thought it was. Right. I think you were a little ahead of him on that. Mm -hmm. So again, what we try to do here, you try to do the screening, you know he's drunk a little more than he thinks he's drunk. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to kind of just talk with him and maybe get him to be concerned a little more before you tell him that you're concerned. So I would ask a little bit more maybe about was there any, were there any negative effects of any of your drinking okay. at any time? Something like that that might get him engaged in thinking about that. Even after you gave him the information, which I, was really good by the way, you did a very nice job talking about the, the liver and uh, the, how the processing of that and the alcohol contributing to the high blood pressure. I thought that was really well done. Um, but you, you might want to get him to w ask him a little bit more and wait for a little more of an answer about you know, what do you, what do you think about that? And get him to kind of talk a little bit m about, well, it might be an issue or something like that. If you can get a little bit, just a little window of mm -hmm. uh, concern, then you have a better chance of him thinking, well, maybe I need to change that behavior. So you did very well on the screening. Um, you did very nicely in terms of congratulating him uh, about his efforts around smoking and other kinds of behavior changes that he did. So we like to see that. Um, he wasn't very ready. And so there I think you'd have to do a little more work to kind of get him ready. Just ask about that and say, you know, I, I, I'm still seeing a connection between your drinking and the possibility of it contributing. To get him engaged, you might also want him to do, uh, do a little bit of an experiment. Okay. So you kind of say to him, look, I, I don't know. You're not convinced really that uh, the alcohol is really contributing to your high blood pressure. I think it might be. Could we do a little experiment and test this? Can you um, maybe just in the next uh, couple of weeks cut down a little bit on the drinking that you do each night and then we can kind of see each other back again in a month and check and see if it might be affecting your blood pressure. Okay. 
and he might buy that goal a little bit more and kind of maybe go with you on that a little bit more. Reflect what he says. So at one point I think he was saying something about, um, well, you know, I don't drink any more than any other people. So, so it, then I would kind of, well, it might help, it might uh, contribute to your high blood pressure but you have a lot of people around you who are drinking the same amount as you, so it doesn't seem to be a problem. Mm -hmm. And you just lay it out so that he kind of has to do a little more uh, reflecting on that and talking to you about that. So I think you used a number of the good techniques that we have taught you in terms of the brief intervention stuff. So I thought you did a very nice job there with the affirmations and introducing it and doing the screening and screening all the behaviors. That was very well done. Uh, the only thing I think we need to keep working on is kind of engaging the patient a little bit more in the solution and maybe even in seeing the problem as much as you do because mm -hmm. uh, he was just not quite there with you. Yeah. So whatever strategies you could do to kind of get him involved, get him to talking a little bit more about his drinking and then maybe negotiating with him about the goal in a way that he can buy into mm -hmm. like we talked about. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Now you've seen an example of supervision with Espert. What I'd like to focus on is the feedback and the process of supervision. It wasn't a long interaction, less than five minutes, so you can really get a lot accomplished in a short period of time. Hopefully, you noticed that the supervisor is always in a respectful mode, trying to get the perspective of the supervisee and trying to include that respect even when they're talking with them about how to improve. The strategies that the supervisor employed are the ORs, open-ended questions, affirmations, reflections, and summaries. The same strategies we want residents to use with patients. The supervisor also used a feedback sheet, which can help you check off the expert skills as you watch the resident's interaction with the patient, and then go through afterwards with the resident in the supervision section. Let's think about you as the supervisor and look at the flow of this supervision session. You should start with an open-ended question to get the resident's perspective on how the expert interaction went. For example, in the video, you saw the supervisor ask, how do you think that went? Then you can reinforce positive aspects of the resident's interaction using affirmations, which should be genuine and congruent with what you saw, specific to what the resident did. You may have noticed in the video, the supervisor used many affirmations, such as, you did a really nice job of doing the screening and connecting it with his blood pressure. If the resident doesn't volunteer aspects of the interaction that could be improved, ask an open-ended question, such as, what could have gone better? Throughout this conversation, you should be demonstrating that you are listening by reflecting back what you hear the resident telling you showing that you are trying to understand the resident's perspective using reflections. In the video, when the resident says, I'm not sure that he realized it was as much of a problem as I thought it was, the supervisor reflected this, saying, so you are a little ahead of him on that. He wasn't really ready. Then, you can give them some feedback on what you saw areas where you think there could be improvement. It can be very direct feedback about concrete things you saw the resident do. Like in the video, the supervisor said, you might want to ask him more about what he thinks about that and get him to talk about how alcohol might be an issue. Then you have a better chance of him thinking, well, maybe I need to change that behavior. So as you're trying to give them feedback, continue to use reflections and open-ended questions in your discussion of how to make it more effective. And at the end, you can summarize your conversation, calling attention to the most salient points and clarifying what you saw in the performance and what you've heard, 
and where you think that they can make some improvements. This is a collaborative interaction with the resident. If you really believe that they need some additional help, then it's your responsibility as a supervisor to offer to either come back in and look at another patient interaction with them, or see if there's another way this resident could develop additional skills or knowledge, that they could review the modules again, maybe practice with another resident, but you're offering some ways that they could build these skills and knowledge for successful interactions with this patient and any patient that they're going to see. We hope this video helped model a supervision session and gave you some ideas on how to best supervise your residents and help them deliver ESPERT in the most effective way. Please visit our website for more video examples. SBIRT training modules, pocket cards, and other additional tools. Thank you for your attention.